Hey everyone, I'm Mr. G and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going over how events work in Scratch. If you're brand new here and you learned something from the video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one. If you still have questions though, post them in the comments below and I will answer them soon. Scratch is an event-based programming language, meaning that when you're running a Scratch program, the browser is listening to and trying to detect if any event has occurred. So for example, if you click on your mouse or press a key on the keyboard, Scratch can detect that and then follow any instructions that the coder has written for that sprite. So Scratch, when it's running in the browser, is listening for events. So as a Scratch coder, it's a good idea to get in the practice of understanding what events are available to listen to built into Scratch. So I'm gonna show you the seven events that occur that we can detect, and then I'm gonna show you how you can create your own event listener in just a minute. So if we go over to the events palette, we can see these hat blocks and they're named hat blocks because they are usually the start of a script. So these are the ones that can listen to specific events, such as when a user clicks on the green flag. So when I click on the green flag, that's an event that the browser can detect and then respond to. If I press the space key, I could also change this over to any other key that I want. So we can detect those events too. Or if I click on the sprite, that's another event we can listen for. Uh, or when the backdrop changes, when the loudness is greater than a certain value, or the timer goes off, we can create a timer just like that as well. Or we can create our own events called broadcasts that I would recommend you check out the video in the card above and try to understand how to create your own broadcasts because this will be an event that you will constantly use over and over again once you become a little bit more advanced. There is one last event that I want to go over that's found in the control palette. And that is when I start as a clone. So when you get to be a little bit more of an advanced coder, you'll be able to create clones of sprites. There might be some situations where you want to create multiple sprites that are all identical, have the same identical features, characteristics, and properties. And so this will allow you to, when you start as a clone, do something specific. So now that I've gone over the built-in scratch blocks available for you to listen to events, I wanna go over a situation that may come up where you wanna detect an event, but there is no block for it. So for example, let's say you wanna to check to see if the user ever clicks with their mouse on the stage somewhere. Right now, there is no block that can detect a mouse press, but you can create your own. So if we go over to the control palette, we can check forever keep checking to see if the user presses down on the mouse. And if we go over to the sensing palette, there's a block called mouse down that we can add into our if statement, our conditional, and we could check to see if the mouse down is ever true. So that means that the user has clicked somewhere on the stage. So right now it's not running, but if you click on this script, it'll start running, or you can attach it to an event such as when green flag is clicked. So this runs whenever the green flag is clicked at the start of the program. But what I want to do just to show off that this works, let's go over to our looks palette and let's drag a say hello for two seconds block. So now to run this script, I'm going to click on the green flag and you can see that it's highlighted yellow. So now I know my event listener is working. And if I click anywhere on the screen on the stage, the cat will say hello for two seconds and then it'll go away. Now, if I click somewhere else, let's say at the bottom right, we're detecting this event and we created it ourselves. So this is not built into Scratch. We had to code it up ourselves. So you might find some situations where there is no block that you're looking for and you gotta be very creative about how you're gonna detect a specific event. But sometimes the event is already there, the hat block is there, the listener is there, so you don't have to create it from scratch. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you next time.